Thank you all very much for joining us today. This is Mitsui OSK Lines Fiscal Year 2022 First Quarter Business Performance Briefing. My name is Sonoda of the Corporate Communications Department. We thank you for your continued support of our company. CFO Umemura will now present our business performance result using the document shown on the screen. Hello, this is CFO Umemura. I'd like to give you an, an overview of the first quarter results and also the fiscal year 2022 full year forecast. First, let me share with you the figures for the first quarter. In a nutshell, the results were very strong. Business profit, which is the sum of operating profit and equity in earnings of affiliates, amounted to 266.3 billion yen and ordinary profit to 284.1 billion yen. Net income achieved 285.7 billion yen, a significant increase compared to the same period last year. All were higher than in the fourth quarter of FY21, and we have achieved the highest quarterly profits on record. There are no changes to the full year forecasts from those figures disclosed at the appropriate time on 21st of July. Considering the current market conditions and after carefully examining the impact of the yen's depreciation, the forecast for ordinary ink profit has been revised upwards from the initial forecast announced on the 28th of April from 525 billion yen to 710 billion yen, and the forecast for net profit has also been revised upwards from 500 billion yen to 700 billion yen. In line with the upward revision of the earnings forecast, the planned interim dividend has been revised from 200 yen announced at the end of April to 300 yen, the planned year-end dividend from 150 yen to 200 yen, and the full-year dividend from 350 yen to 500 yen. Let me touch upon the detail of these numbers using the financial report document relevant pages. Please go to pages uh, 5 and 7 of the presentation. Revenue was up by 85.9 billion yen from the same period of the previous year. Despite concerns about the lockdown in Shanghai and the impact of the situation of Russia and Ukraine, the first quarter saw an increase in revenues, mainly due to the maintenance of firm freight rates in the dry bulk and car carrier businesses. As mentioned earlier, both business profit and ordinary profit increased. Business profit increased by 167 billion yen and ordinary profit increased by almost 180 billion yen. And here onwards would be the detail of each segment. Three main segments, dry bulk, energy and product transport, all increased their profits. The increases in profits were due, as you may have guessed, to number one, the solid demand for contain, um, containerized cargo transport, to the higher investment income um, from Ocean Network Express ONE and an Equity Method Affiliate, and three, uh, the car carrier business increasing profits due to flexible replacement of routes and cargoes in response to fluctuations in demand. And for the product transportation business significantly increased profits on an ordinary income basis by approximately 160 billion yen. ONA continues to make a significant profit contribution, but even if it's excluded, ordinary profits exceeded 50 billion yen in the first quarter. Now by segment, please see page 4 and the middle part of page 5. In the dry bulk business, ordinary profit increased by 12 billion yen year on year to 18.5 billion yen, with all vessel types reporting a year on year increase in profit. By ship type, firstly, iron ore and coal carriers, Cape size 
bulk carriers recorded a year-on-year -year increase, supported by solid transport demand, particularly steel demand in China, and also due to the change in the accounting method for fuel costs came effect from the current year. The spot market is started at a low level in April due to the lockdown in Shanghai, China, but rose to the forty thousand US dollar a day level in May as a result of a sharp increase in demand for coal for India. And since then, Due to a lull in demand for coal transport and other factors, the supply demand balance for shipping has eased somewhat, falling to the twenty thousand dollar a day level, and is currently staying at the similar level. Medium and small sized bulkers and wood chip carriers operated by MOL dry bulk and coasters are also performing well for coastal ships. The market is strong with increased demand for transporting the biomass fuel coconut shell (PKS). As for MOL dry bulk, profits increased here too year on year. Other significant profit contributors include the open hatch vessels Balkers, operated by Gear Bulk, an equity method affiliate, and. In addition to solid cargo movement of a pulp and a paper, our、um, main cargo, we're taking general bulkers on our return voyages, and hence the improved market conditions for general bulkers have improved our earnings. Energy business. Our energy business recorded an ordinary income of nine point five billion yen, an increase of five point one billion yen year on year. There has been a sub-segment reorganization earlier this year, and all the sub-segments, including the tanker and offshore business and the liquefied、uh, gas business, have all achieved year-on-year profit growth. Let me explain in more detail the sub-segment by sub-segment. Tanker and offshore business. Cargo movements of crude oil carriers are showing a slight recovery trend due to the gradual easing of OPEC's coordinated production cuts, in line with increased oil demand in response to the recovery trend in the global economy. However, the oversupply of shipping capacity was not resolved in the first quarter, and the market conditions remained challenging. Meanwhile, the market for petroleum product vessels remained high due to increased sea transport needs for alternative procurement of petroleum products from Russia. As a result, the tanker business recorded a year-on-year -year increase in profits. In the offshore business, the FPSO. Business saw a year-on-year -year increase in profit due to the Brazil offshore FPSO project coming on stream. The next is a liquefied gas business. The LNG carriers, as you know, have existing long-term contracts which ensure stable profits. In the FSRU business. One existing vessel was in a period of turning around and conversion work for a project in Hong Kong, but the vessel was additionally put into operation in Singapore before the Hong Kong project went into operation, resulting in an increase in profit over the same period last year. Next is the product transport business. In the product transport business, firstly in the container ships business, investment income of two hundred thirty two point nine billion yen was recorded from OLNE and Equity Method affiliate, resulting in an increase of one hundred fifty nine point six billion yen compared to the same period last year. Ordinary profit mounted to two hundred forty nine point eight billion yen in the first quarter alone. For the container ship business. Please find the ONE's magenta color document, page three. As noted at the top of this page, there has been some softening in the supply and demand. However, freight market conditions remained strong. The company achieved a profit after tax of 
5,499 million U.S. dollars, approximately 5.5 billion dollars, in the first quarter, an increase of 2,940 million dollars compared to the same period last year. As for the market environment, we have been observing, as described here on the document, um, the followings. First, global cargo demand remained strong in the period April to June, with no major disruptions despite the impact of the Shanghai lockdown and the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Two, on the supply side, port congestion showed signs of improvement in some areas, but a worsened in the east coast of North America and elsewhere. And supply chain disruptions uh, continued worldwide. And three, this resulted in freight rates remaining significantly higher than in the same period last year, boosting uh, period boosting profits. A waterfall chart is provided at the bottom of this page, comparing this quarter and the first quarter of fiscal year 2021. As you can see, the main reason for the increase in a profit is the increase in a revenue due to higher freight rates. Volume is tended to soften slightly due to the Shanghai lockdown and the situation in Russia and Ukraine. However, Firm utilization rate was maintained and fare levels remained significantly higher than in the same period of the previous year. Long-term contracts reflecting the high spot freight rates to date have contributed to profits. Please find more details on the next page of the ONE document. Be great if you can check um, the page later. Now let's return to page six of our blue document. Let me start again from where we left off in the product to transport businesses section, car carriers. In the car carrier segment, the number of vehicles transported remained more or less the same level as in the previous year, despite the continued impact cost on the finished vehicle production and a shipment from the Shanghai lockdown, giving apart supply shortages, supply chain disruptions. This was a result of continued efforts to capture demand for the transport of used cars, as well as a flexible vessel allocation adjustments in line with the production and a shipment of finished vehicles. Terminal and logistics business. A terminal and a logistics business were included in the container ships business until last year, but they have been itemized separately as a subsegment from this year. In the terminals business, profit increased as container handling volumes remained strong despite the ongoing logistics turmoil. In addition, in the logistics business, Air and sea freight cargo volumes remained strong, resulting in a year-on-year -year increase in profits. Ferries and coastal rural ships. There were no emergency declaration or priority measures to prevent the spread of the disease, um, the pandemic, COVID-19, coming from the government in the first quarter, and hence the number of passengers improved uh, significantly with the demand during the long holiday, golden week, uh, along with other periods. The recovery trend was also maintained in the logistics business. Real estate business, as you know, our real estate business has a dibilu at its core. Despite a year-on-year -year decline in profits coming from the dis reconstruction of some office buildings owned by dibilu, profits remained stable. Associated businesses, due to increased sales operations, the crude ship business improved its profit loss status compared to the same period last year. The tugboat business saw a year-on-year -year decline in profit, mainly due to higher bunker oil prices, although the situation differs at each port or each company. This concludes uh, the overview of the first quarter financial results. Now, uh, let me cover the forecast for the fiscal year 2022 full year. 
As indicated in the appropriate disclosure on twenty first of July, the forecasts have been revised upwards considering the current performance and other factors. This year's results are expected to be close to the record profits achieved in the previous year. We are forecasting. Uh, results considering the expected slowdown of the global economy in the second half, as we assumed at the beginning of this fiscal year. Uh, with the global、um, inflation continuing to rise and various figures showing a slight slowdown in the economy, the forecast that a cargo movement will weaken from the second half of the year onwards. For all types of vessels, remain unchanged from how we predicted back in April. The、um, exchange rate assumption has been revised from one hundred and twenty yen to the dollar, which was assumed in April, to one hundred and twenty-five yen to the dollar, considering the fact. The yen has weakened since the beginning of the pre- period. This page provides a general overview of our full year forecasts. Revenue has been revised upwards by one hundred and seventeen billion yen from the previous announcement to one thousand four hundred seventy billion yen. Profits figures have also been revised upwards. Ordinary profit has been revised upwards by seven hundred ten billion yen, and a net profit has been revised upwards by seven hundred billion yen. Ordinary profit, excluding the container ship business, is also expected to exceed the previous year's full year result by one hundred twenty five billion yen due to upward revisions in the dry bulk and car carrier businesses. Next is segment by segment. The dry bulk business has revised its forecast by twenty billion yen from the previous forecast to an unexpected full year ordinary profit of fifty billion yen. As for、uh, iron ore and coal carriers, the Cape size bulker market requires attention to trends in the Chinese government's economic stimulus measures and also to the global weather. Still. Cargo movements are expected to remain firm due to solid iron core shipments from Australia, and as in previous years, an anticipated increase in Brazilian iron core shipments as the second half of the year progresses. The market for small and medium-sized bulkers and wood chips、uh, carriers operated by MOL Dry Bulk is also expected to remain strong. Open hatch bulkers listed as other. Are also expected to continue to perform well. In particular, Gear Bulk, which operates open hatch bulkers, has its financial year ending in December, and we expect it to continue to perform well until the end of their fiscal year, December. Energy business. The energy business has also revised its forecast by four billion yen from the forecast announced at the end of April to a full year forecast of twenty six billion yen ordinary profit. Let me now provide you a brief description of each sub segment: tankers and offshore business. With regard to crude oil carriers, the risk of a softening market remains if the global economy slows down due to in- interest rate hikes in various countries. However, the market is expected to improve if the supply demand balance for shipping tightens due to an increase in the cargo movements following the end of coordinated crude oil production cuts or an increase in the scrapping. As reported in the quarterly results, the market for petroleum product vessels is expected to remain high, supported by demand for alternative procurement of petroleum products from Russia, and firm demand from China, South America, and other countries. Liquefied gas business. The LNG carrier business continues to maintain stable profits in the liquefied gas business. However, profits are expected to 
people year on year due to the expir- expiry of an, 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 of an existing long-term contract, which has brought significant earnings until now. On the other hand, as explained in the first quarter results, the FSRU business is expected to see a year-on-year increase in profits due to the acquisition of an additional contract in Singapore and its operation. Product transport business For the product transport business, the forecast has been revised upwards by 162 billion yen from the forecast announced at the end of April to a full year forecast of 630 billion yen in ordinary profit. First, container ships. Reflecting a stronger cargo movements and a freight market conditions, the forecast for container ship business has been revised upwards by 145 billion yen from the forecast announced at the end of April to 585 billion yen in ordinary profit. MOL expects both cargo volumes and freight rates to soften from the second half of the year onwards as previously forecasted due to easing of congestion in port and inland transport, rising inventories of consumer goods in Europe and the US and the future progression of inflation and unstable global conditions. At the beginning of this year, we assumed that the softening of the market conditions would become apparent sooner than how it's showing. As the current utilization rate is still close to 100%, we now expect this level of utilization to continue until early autumn, hence have revised our forecasts upwards. Car carriers. Although there are concerns about the impact of shortages of semiconductors and other components on sales in a production of finished vehicles, demand is strong, especially in North America, as uh, there has not been an adequate supply of new cars and the transport volumes are expected to continue on a recovery path. Having the outstanding performance in the first quarter as a solid foundation, MOL expects to further increase its profits by making flexible vessel allocation adjustments in line with the future cargo movements. Next is a terminal logistics business. Here too, with the outstanding performance in the first quarter as its foundation, the volume of goods handled is expected to remain strong with the year-on-year growth in a profit anticipated to exceed initial expectations. Ferries and coastal railroad ships vessel. In the passenger business, although another surge in the number of people infected of COVID-19 are happening, Passenger demand recovery is expected to come as anticipated because restrictions on people's behavior and actions are easing. We're hence expecting this business to return to profitability. Real estate business. As mentioned in the first quarter, rental income is expected to decline due to the reconstruction of owned properties. Still, profits are expected to remain strong, mainly due to high uh, occupancy, occupancy rates in overseas properties. Associated businesses with a relaxed restriction on people's movements, cruise ships and the travel industry businesses are expected to see demand recovery. Profitability is hence expected to improve too. Finally, I'd like to touch upon the dividends. As mentioned at the beginning of this report, uh, in line with the upward revision of the earnings forecast, the interim dividend has been raised by 100 yen from the previous announcement in April to 300 yen per share. The planned year-end dividend has also been raised by 50 yen to 200 yen per share and the full-year dividend by 150 yen to 
500 yen per share. The shares have been split into three as of 1st of April, and that is the prerequisite in our dividend discussion、um, I just、uh, shared with you. The dividend payout ratio continues to be maintained at 20% for the current financial year, too. This concludes my presentation part. Um, if there are any messages from our presenters, please use the remaining time to do so. Well, then, I will briefly,、um, as I said earlier, we have had a robust financial performances. The container business is a significant contributor to our profits, but we also make a lot of profit in other sectors. Um, it's already July end, and it will probably continue to be quite strong until the end of the first half. Great performances will continue. And as for the second half of the year, a slowdown in the global economy and a technical recession seems to be both inevitable given the current situation in Europe and、uh, US. Uh, we're hence、uh, expecting a slight decline in the ocean freight market as a result. And、um, the tricky part is how much the decline、uh, it will be.、Um, very difficult to estimate. While we will strive to secure 710 billion yen level ordinary profit, if freight market conditions and cargo movements turn out to Be better than we assumed, then we can achieve an increase in our earnings in the second half of the year as well.、Uh, we will reconsolidate the figures with a more detailed analysis of the situation at the timing of the second quarter results announcement.、Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you all very much once again for joining us today. This concludes our financial results briefing. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you.